I'm a believer that architecture is a really incredibly layered thing. Hi, I'm Mark Healy. I'm a director at Six Degrees. We've been doing architecture for about 25 years. The original Six is now an office, a studio of 30. We do a real mixture of work across a lot of fields. We're still interested in design-driven solutions. word party when I was studying architecture we, we never used the term but what we kind of talked about was the big idea I think that's what party is really about in architecture what's the big idea driving something as an architect I'm not really a singular big idea person although sometimes projects might appear that way but I think really good architecture is a whole lot of ideas it can be under one organizing principle if you're lucky enough to have a simple singularity and opportunity for that. But underneath it, there's lots and lots of ideas because I'm a believer that architecture is a really incredibly layered thing. If anything ties the work together, it is the user experience. There are architects who design the object, the sculptural thing, and then they jam the human program into it. And there's other architects who generate the plan from the human experience of a program, how you approach a building, the threshold, how you enter, how you organise your movement through it. That approach delivers an, an external form that's driven by that more the internal, the user experience. So we're very much from that school of thought. For argument in designing a primary school a fundamental thing you need to look at is to understand that a lot of the people occupying what you build they're only about 1.4 tall so spatially if you build large volumes then it's like them walking around these cavernous spaces for us as an equivalent the plan is the ultimate diagram you can talk someone through it it's a skill that I think we all need to have, even though these days you guys can zip out Enscape rendered Revit things so quickly with animate them as fly-throughs and it's not much left to the imagination. I came from a time where you'd have the piece of paper with your kind of plan on it. At a sketch design, the client only got a plan and you would have the plan and you'd sit down with them and you'd take them on a journey through that plan. So you had to describe as you were moving your finger across the drawing, this is at earliest sketch design, like at six degrees. We didn't draw sections or elevations or, or views. It was usually just the plan. Because the other thing is really as architects, before you launch into the 3D programming, the thing you have to be able to do is you lie down in bed or just or do it sitting in a chair. You need to be able to walk around the building and what you've designed in your head it sounds a bit kind of old-fashioned but you need to be able to walk around it and really understand it because then you can draw it it's like when you just hand drawing something really early stages i still think it's worth even if you're super computer literate like this kind of a5 little notebooks i've been using these for 20 something years or longer since i was a student and they're still the go-to you get drawings like this, you know, it's just a little, that's just a plan for a, an apartment building. Really earliest thoughts of how things are organised. For me, I've always been a fan of just coloured pencils and like trace. When you draw things early on, you can just keep overlaying in coloured pencil. The drawing will only make sense to you or an architect once you pull apart all the layers, but it's a really heavy layered approach is how I like to draw with multiple layers of colored pencil, that's like an ordering device. I remember as a student, like, I just didn't get it for a while. If you've done something in your life, like say, learn a musical instrument, as an example, you might be able to play something pretty well because you've spent hours and hours, by the time you're 18, say, you might be quite proficient at playing something. I think it's worth understanding how you got there with say something like a musical instrument because there's really pragmatic things about it whether it's scales technique but if you're also creatively will make up stuff as well so you've got this way of thinking that you can completely apply to architecture 
for me, it was like when I started approaching architecture, how I'd approached music, things started going well. But when I sort of started in first year as an architect and it was just all just new architecture, it was like kind of nothing to hang it off. But I, then I realised I'd been playing music since I was seven or eight and I developed a way of creatively thinking and working in a medium and you could just transplant it. I was taking a group of thesis students last semester and uh, we were talking music and I threw them an old Talking Heads, the first song off, Remain in Life. It's a great example of this it's super architectural, you know, how the bass lines and guitar and the keyboards and stuff, how they layer and work together to this whole composition and everything sort of supports each other. It's just quite architectural in how I, things like that. Because the other side of it is you can't treat architecture like a production line as this long linear thing. You know, making a pizza, you just, you know, make the dough and then you sprinkle on some services and stick on some structure and fenestration. You know, it doesn't really work that way. It's how everything's informing something else. You've got an idea for a building spatially and then you go, okay, I've got to heat and cool this thing. If it's facing west, you're not going to do one giant wall of glass because, you know, everyone's going to cook. But you also think spatially, do I want that space to have really small apertures, let light in like little beams of really accented direct light? Or do I want to just actually have an environment that's all sort of indirectly lit and reflected and bounce around walls without anyone seeing a window or seeing out? You come back to what's, how do I want this space to feel? Well, most of us start doing up someone's bathroom as your first job or doing an, an extension of the kitchen if you're lucky. And so you've got these tiny little environments. And with a house, you can ask people about how they like to live. If you're building a house, I could, you know, are you like a morning person? Do you want a bedroom that's orientated towards the east, lots of light? You're an early riser. You might say, no, Mark, I'm more like a vampire. I want an incredibly subdued bedroom. Maybe I'll put no windows or maybe just some really tiny defined view and maybe I'll just use skylights to light the space. You just pull apart stuff and you get the answer to what it wants to be. Keep asking questions. Never look at what's in fashion. It's all about first principles every time. couple of little things I got taught when I was younger. You might be drawing a plan. Every now and again, turn everything upside down and work on it. Because we all just turn something the same way. But get your drawing and turn it upside down. And then you can get back to working on it. The other thing is change scale. If you're under 200 and you're just stuck in a rut, go take a piece of it and draw it at 1 to 20. And it'll, you'll start looking at a whole level of detail and relationship differently. And that can sort of click you out of it if you're a bit stuck. Sometimes a really nice way to work is not to say, I'm going to work on this one, then that one. Just suspend everything. You'll just find you'll gravitate to one and it might not be the one you're meant to be working on. And you'll find that you just start in and you're just you're working on, see what throws out a bit of charm and interest. Like let yourself pick. It's like if you've ever done an all-nighter or just a big night and you go into like a 7-Eleven and those giant fridges and they're full of every drink under the sun and your hand goes and you come out with something your body made the decision that you needed that big M or that Red Bull. Or you just weren't thinking and the body just did something. You've got to go hard and really believe in what something should be but if you hear a better idea, you just got to go, oh, yeah, let's do that. Let's change that. I remember it was years ago in the early days of the office, I was the first or second house I'd done. And it was like I'd built this model and it was this cardboard thing on a hill and I had it like this. Chris Godsell, a friend who was an architect, came in and he looked at it and he just picked up this half of the model and just turned it like 90 degrees and said, should do that. And I'd been fiddling around with this thing for months and it was just this little move and I just went, yeah, that's perfect. Crits are good if they're really positive and supportive. You're never putting someone's work down. You, you never do that. No. Mm -hmm.